Awesome. So why more people join Elofit? How are you doing today? Hello, sir. Good evening. I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? Doing, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. And thank everyone. Thanks all for joining. So um, right now, uh, I just want to ask a general question before we discuss or share thought on what we have for today. Because I'm going to hand this more over to Francis, maybe two, three minutes just to share his thought on, you know, data lakes and we take questions. And so it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter that we spend 30 minutes, to be honest. Uh, we could just have less than that. Uh, what count is coming as a ritual, coming together here, uh, that consistency matters a lot. And um, even with this 10 minutes of sharing our thoughts, it goes a long way. So uh, just a general question to, to Faith. You know, how's the learning been for you? Coming from a data analyst, you know, uh, point of view, what, what will you, in 30 seconds, how will you describe, you know, this learning journey so far? Thank you so much, Ola, for the opportunity. So um, starting from the very first day, it has been an interesting one. From building a link house to working on some things, it has been really, really amazing. And I like it when I can just easily go to the left lower side of my screen and just switch it from Power BI to the Synapse Data Engineering. And the fact that I could do, I could work with code and also decide to do low code is so amazing. So on the very, on the second day, I worked with Power Query inside of Microsoft Fabric and it felt like a different world entirely. So it's something that I am really, really enjoying. And I also like the labs that come after every module. So you're not just reading this thing and reading theory, you are reading and at the same time, you are, you know, practicalizing this thing. So it has been an amazing journey for me and I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Faith, for that, you know, feedback. And Francis, do you see that truly people are excited and I can imagine the smile on your face now because yes, um, same energy, you know, that you have as well, the use cases you built and seeing that people are also enjoying this just the way I am. Because Fabric is new, some of those underlying technology or services are actually not new. Um, I know the activator is a new one entirely, but many others that are already that there, they are not new. They already existed in one form or other in a service on Mesh of Azure. But the fact that they are all together in a new name, new format on Microsoft Fabric and you know, new interfaces, also, we still have interest to learn them. I mean, there are still one or two things to learn because you are literally not going to Azure and use the services the way they've been there before. But now you're interacting with them in a different environment uh, because it's been certified. And that in itself shows that there's still something to be learned. And personally for me, it's been an engaging and interesting one uh, because every time, every time I go through those modules, I relate them quickly back to experience, to rethink. You know, okay, this is what I've been doing before. If I'm not using Fabric, this is how I'm going to be approaching it because um, I've used these services in the past, but not the way I've used them now. This is how I need to use them in Fabric. And it's been so, so amazing because I can see the ad label that Fabric has taken care of. If I'm trying to assess my services in the past and use Pack, I know where I used to go to and I know how, you know, how all those processes I go through. But in Fabric, in one place, you know, it's amazing. So I'm going to hand this over to Francis now, who, you know, uh, as short as possible, is just going to summarize uh, today's, uh, you know, module, which is work with data lake, data lake tables in Microsoft Fabrics. Just you know, give us a brief summary. And then we take questions and we just call it a day. Hello, Francis. Thank you a lot. Good evening. Good evening, face and good evening, everyone that is here. Uh, thank you for calling us to enjoy fabric. Uh, before I even give you some, let me see my own part of it. Exactly. Part of it. <laughs> wow, finally intriguing. You know, when I I was already, I was into Synapse Analytics when Fabric was announced. And then, if you're working with uh, data in Synapse Analytics, I know the stress that you have to go through to create your resource group, manage group, 
create your storage before you now transform your data from csv called the bronze layer that you now move to uh, silver layer before you go to gold layer so it's actually a lot of work but with fabric you now you have your csv file uploaded inside of lake houses and then we just two click you already have your 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 data sets in in data form or in, in pathway form the only difference between data and pathway is just the data log that is differentiated them so it takes a lot of processes and then and sometimes you may even have to configure store procedures to transform your table you you update this particular table you delete them and all of that so it's actually a lot of work but with fabric now you can actually just get your data in data lake format that is actually very optimized for big storage and also for for processing so let me just go straight to the summary of what we are uh, going through today which is uh, working with uh, data lake tables in microsoft fabric so if you have been following us from day one you realize that after the one that we did our introduction the next thing that we did was a uh, lake houses and yesterday also we took a uh, apache spark which is a um, parallel uh, processing framework for processing large data sets and something was standing out yesterday when we were revising that which was a divide and conquer approach another way you can say is a uh, division of labor using several compute to process your data and then it makes things faster so uh, today now we are not talking about data leak whatever thing the apache spark is processing for you is actually stored in a format called data lake storage format this format is actually an open source of spark that is actually very fast and then it's also actually uh very optimized for for data analysis in the sense that you can actually have your data form in data lake that is fast and also you can query it with with sql so you get the advantage of relational database management system at the same time you get the speed of apache spark so your data is actually stored in lake houses in this format and in almost all of the uh, fabric apparatus even your data warehouse into the fact that your data is available in lake format means that you can in the trickle of an eye you can get your data in lake format and what you will start that will make you know that okay this data you are processing is in actually a data lake it is the arrow icon that you have right beside it that it will show you that okay this is lake and you can query it you can decide to even run your sql query on the query interface separately or you can even run your SQL query inside of Spark Notebook to interact with your uh, with your data. So it gives you so much flexibility that the old data set that you are working with is actually uh, very, very fast. And that brings me to the point of uh, the storage mode when you are working with Pavia, for example, where you have um, import mode and direct query. There is a new mode now because of data lake format called the data uh data mode this data mode will give you the advantages of import mode and also give you the size of data sets of direct query so at the same and interestingly i've actually seen people testing out data lake formats and um import mode and direct query i've actually realized that it's actually even faster than direct query and also you give you the advantage of import mode so it's actually a very huge one and uh it's going to help but i think i should just discard this general aspect now for people that are going through the modules that you will not necessarily have to work with codes like the way you saw it to this exercise it's just to show you how spark notes book work what you can you always do in real life now will be that you upload your csv file from wherever source you are getting it from and then with just few clicks you can get it transformed from csv to a data format so just keep your mind at rest and don't be scared that oh, how do you understand spark code now do you have to start learning spark code now like the idea of faith mentioned earlier you can actually do your code if you are comfortable with code people that are doing spark before can easily do their data transformation you can do their read and write operation using spark code but for someone that you are just coming from data analysis background and you just want to transform your data into a format that is optimized for your lake houses you can just upload it uh, into your lake houses and please don't forget that lake houses can take both structured and unstructured data you can upload any file into your lake house and most especially in our case now it's going to be csv that you are going to upload into your lake house and then you can transform that in a twinkle of an eye to data lake so if you understand the concept of data lake then you realize that every asset most that you are going to be working mostly inside of fabric are actually stored in this 
format. So let me take a stop at this point now. Then we can welcome questions from anybody that wants to ask. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Francis, for you know sharing your thoughts and taking us through that journey today. Yes, like you mentioned, it, it, this is moving us towards data, uh, you know, engineering, especially big data. One thing you should keep, you know, um, at the back of your mind is that you are getting exposed to new things. One, and number two, in the past, you don't even know how those things are being done. You have no idea. As a data analyst, traditional data analyst, you don't even come near all these things. And the fact that you have been exposed to them now, and you even have a user interface that can enable you to learn about them in an easy format. That makes a lot of sense. So but learning new things that for the very first time might not come that easy, or oh, everything might look like magic. For example, when you see the Spark SQL code, you know, oh, this one looks like Python. And if you are not even into Python, you are wondering, what's all this? Why do I have double percentage? Why do I have all this kind of code? Is this what I'll be writing? Like Francis mentioned, not like that. And even if you have to learn them, you should see that it's they've taken off the hard work. And what was done, the summary of what was done today was to let you know the technical, few of the technical parts of data lake. What example, what exactly is this data lake, which is a combination of a lake house technology plus the Apache Spark own parallel processing. That's where the data format is coming from. Delta, you know, mix. Uh, that, that's the aspect of coming from um, Apache. And the lake is that element coming from um, uh, um, Data Lake Gen 2, which is which is um, Azure Data Lake Gen 2, ADLS, Azure Data Lake Storage. Of course. So when you bring those two things together, I mean, it still gives you the structure, the formats of structured data, and you have the power, retriever, strength, the fast, like made Francis mentioned, and, you know, it, you're able to query it faster. Well, you won't understand this now until you have huge amount of data, big data. That's when you see the differences in speed and how that can actually make a lot of difference when you work on project. Okay. So, um, yes, I believe there could still be one or two questions, you know, based on today's uh, module. Uh, so if you have any question, you can feel free to make a request and I'm going to pass this over to Faith. Thank you so much, Alan Francis, for that one more. Thank you so much. So, guys, please, if you have questions, you can request to speak, come off mute, and then ask your questions, or you can use the comment section to actually ask your questions. So, before, um, as we wait for people that are going to ask questions, I just want to throw this open to Ola and Francis, because I also have some people that are, um, like, we chat on WhatsApp, and they, we've been talking about Microsoft Fabric for some time. And they are coming from a data analyst background. And now they're asking questions like, for example, even after this challenge, for somebody that is doing business analysis or data in, um, data analysis, would you all, would you advise that they also continue with this program? Like, I know after this um, 10 days, we still have access to Microsoft Fabric, maybe I think another 50 days. Would you say that they continue with all of these modules and this time go over them again to get acquainted with all of these things or they should just focus on the real-time analytics in the fabric space i don't know if Ola or francis likes uh, yeah, I, i'm going to let francis answer but let me quickly add something here first for you you should i would say go through this over and over again that would be my best bet because personally for me, this is my top time of going through all these modules. And for the next 30 days, I will continue to go to them repeatedly. And because the goal is, is to understand this technology, something new. I want to have a good understanding of this technology. And I'm already, I'm already working on some serious use cases. And I'm also building on my own at the back end. Yes, when you come across very soon, when you get to a module where you talk about Power BI, you will see Power BI. Power BI is not real-time analytics right away. So you see, real-time analytics are more like the streaming data. So even you that you are thinking of real-time analytics, when you get there, you realize, okay, where do you get use cases? More use cases that are streamed data that are more real-time analytics. So, uh-huh. 
uh, uh, you will come across the module for Power BI, but you need to know now that the way Power BI works inside Fabric is not the same way you've been working with Power BI before. And that, those are the new knowledge you need to know. For example, when you are in Fabric and you open up, pull off your Power BI, you are connecting to data, already existing data lake, lake house, your lake house. And if you don't know what lake house is before, you still think it's the traditional way of connecting with data. No. In the lake house, similar to that, but you can do your transformation and write back into data that is stored in lake house and do those transformations. So if you are not aware, it's not the regular Power BI desktop, it's still Power BI, but now in the past, you cannot open Power Query on web. But now you can. You can even use it for transformation. It's the end-to-end, -end, it's the local tool for transformation now, data flow tool. So you need to know how the same Power BI used to do before, now how can I now do it in public? Because data is stored somewhere, and that's how you are going through this learning journey know where the data is stored, how those data are being manipulated, and now you cannot connect Power BI to that data because you know what data uh, lake house is, you know, you know how to connect to them, you know how to maybe transform data or connect to already transform data. That is something new as well. You need to learn. So you might end up focusing on it for the meantime, but you need to know how that Power BI in that environment, you know, end up. If your company today gives you MacBook, what you end up using going forward is going to be fabric. Because you can't download there, they will hardly configure or partition your Mac, you know, and start downloading Power BI desktop. Because Power BI there is, desktop is only for Windows. But on, you know, in the cloud, in Fabric, you don't need desktop. And you can still do everything you want to do on your own premise, you know, uh, on your desktop Power BI application. So, you know, this opening up, you know, more possibility for people, data analysts, you know, uh, just to do their work end to end right there. And... Um, the desktop version on the well, online version of the of the system, which is Microsoft Fabric. So I would say yes, you you can end up focusing on your Power BI thing, but you should know and learn how it relates and how it plays and functions in Fabric environment. Uh, I will stop there and, and let Francis also have this. All right, thank you a lot for your submission. So by way of addition to uh, this challenge, you make it like the third time I'm also reading this documentation. It's not something you just did once and then you threw it away. You keep reading it, see, it makes sense. If you read it the first time, it will still look like French to you. Read it the second time, then, okay, this is what they said the first time. Read it the third time, you are getting more comfortable. So, uh, the idea of the challenge is to actually have a fair knowledge of all the aspects of Fabric so that you will not be doing something that is counterproductive or something that Fabric is supposed to solve already for you. For example, now the project I did with Fabric that was end to end now. Because I know Power BI as a desktop application, then there is Power BI also within the fabric uh, environment. Then I was trying to visualize on Power BI. Then I realized that the Power BI on fabric is not as robust as Power BI desktop. But at the same time, I realized that I could actually connect into my lake house using the SQL endpoints. And then all the data set that I have in my lake house will be in my Power BI desktop. So, but at that point, immediately, I remember that, okay, if I want to connect using my SQL server, copying the SQL endpoint string, then I have to choose between import mode and direct query. Then immediately, I remember that, oh, the problem traffic is trying to solve here is to give me the advantage of direct query and import mode. So if I was still choosing one of the two, that means I'm already defeating the purpose why fabric is existing in the very first place. But because I have a general knowledge, a holistic knowledge of what Fabric is trying to do, I will not do that for for my for my for my project because the purpose of Fabric will be debited. That means I'm not utilizing the data lake format that we are actually using in Fabric. So that means I'll be doing the imports or the direct query. So no. So but because I have the knowledge of the engineering part, I have the knowledge of data analysis part, and I have the knowledge of data sciences part. I know what to do to have an optimized performance so that oh, you and your data engineer that you are collaborating together will not be having problem or you with your data scientist. So everybody will be on the same page. So you need a fair knowledge of all of them while at the same time you know where you are struggling. Just like Power BI desktop, some people will say that they are Power Query experts. Some will say they are data modeling experts. Some will say they are DAX experts. Some will say they are UI experts. But that does not mean you that you you are focusing on just one aspect of it. You don't have a knowledge of the two. 
because you know that your data modeling is going to impact your DAX. So you have knowledge of everything you are doing in modeling and at the same time you have knowledge of DAX. So you should actually have a general knowledge of everything so that you will know what to do and then you have an optimized uh, uh, deliverable for your data project. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Ola and Francis, for sharing. Okay, so I think we have a question here. So somebody is saying, good evening. I just got to know about Microsoft Fabric. And my question is that, is Microsoft Fabric in any way connected to the tools in Power Platform? Or is it in any way relevant to Power Platform? Thank you. So, yeah, I will allow that to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> So Microsoft Fabric is, is a new product from Microsoft and it's, um, a, I would just call it the data analytics platform for the era of AI, uh, because it enables organization to quickly get value from their data by handling all the hard work of integrating, you know, manipulating, you know, and making this data fit for purpose. It just simplified that process so that you can now do as much as you need to you know, do to get the value from your data, like analytics, like, um, you know, engineering side, like um, the data science side and the rest. Within Power uh, Metro Fabric, there is Power BI. So Power BI now, in fact, Power BI, if you if are looking for a confused product, Power BI is a confused product because Power BI belongs to Power Platform family. Uh, you know, the, the five tools now, Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, Power Virtual Agent and Power Pages, Power BI is there. And in fabrics, Power BI is so in fabric, Power BI is also there. So uh, if you say something connecting them or making them related is Metro Power BI. Outside that, Metro Fabric is not in any way Power Platform. As a matter of fact, there are data generated from Power Platform activities. All of them you can see stream them back into Fabric, into your lake house. You know, SharePoint data can move back to your lake house. Microsoft 365 data can move into your lake house. And all those data can still, database data can move to your lake house. Database are data generated or data service, database service you use in Power Platform. You know, where all your apps data are stored, you know, for premium services and security and all those features, you can have those data directly connected because also a data source, also a database. You know, so uh, they are not the same thing. Power BI is common to both of them, but both of uh, the two are different products entirely. So I, I hope that sort of answer your question. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Yes, I guess that answers the question. So if you still have questions, we have about five minutes to end this session. So if you still have questions, please ask and so that we can move forward. And also, if you are in Lagos, I'm going to link this now to the Jumbotron. You can check out the Fabric Fridays. It's a monthly physical meetup for the Microsoft Fabric community. So I'll just link that now. You can check it out in your free time. Okay, so I've done that. You can just easily check it. It is public Saturdays. You want to play with well so that it will be FFF. It's public Saturdays. <laughs> oh, did I did I did I not say Fabric Saturdays? You said Friday. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I meant fabric Saturdays, please. <laughs> okay, so please, if you still have questions, you can ask before we end the session. But if we don't have any questions, then we might just have to end the session. But before then, let me also link the thread to all of the all the resources that we've been using, like the spaces and other modules. I'll also link that now so that we can check it out later or when we have the time. Okay, so Ola, I think we do not have any more questions. All right, and uh, it's safe to say we can then bring this to a close for today. And tomorrow is day five. Just like that, we're almost done with 10 days. 
you know, and um, you agree with me that giving an hour, you know, in a day or less than that to catch up on these things uh, goes a long way. And so thank you, everyone. A major thank you to our co-host and everyone that joined and died in. Of course, we can always go back to this. Uh, I'm looking for ways we can optimize this at the end of this whole series. We're going to download all this and turn it to um, a, a sort of podcast just these 10 days because, yeah, the advice, the, con um, the, 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 uh, the submission that is being made on each of these modules can actually help you deepen your understanding, you know, uh, beyond just going through the modules. So it's something really valuable and relevant. And uh, more importantly, anytime I drive, you know, I always listen back to this when I'm in traffic. I take them as my podcast. I just play them. You know, I, you know, in 30 minutes, I'm done. And I've gone through that again and again. So it, it's also very um, helpful. So I would advise you go through that. You know, when you are trying to sleep, just play back those, some of those recordings we've had. You know, or you are going out and you're in traffic. You know, just put your earpiece on. And listen to this, uh, you know, any way that works for you, we'll just make it available in different format as well. So th thank you guys and see you all tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye. 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 Bye.